So let's move on to our next question. Now, if you look at question two, figure 2.2 .2 shows us a different types of rivers. Okay. Now, things change a little bit during your matric year. Okay, grade 12 year. When we look at geomorphology, before this, you only knew about two rivers. Am I correct? Perennial rivers and non-perennial rivers. And you've learned about them from your map work. Okay, from your map work. You, you've gained the knowledge from map work skills. Okay. Now, what do we know? If we look at the perennial river, it was a solid blue line. If we look at the non-perennial river, it was a dotted blue line. Okay. And if we had to define a perennial river, it means it's a river that flows right throughout the year. A non-perennial river flows only during rainy season. Okay. But things have changed a bit when we were introduced to geomorphology in matric. We've learned about permanent rivers. We've learned about periodic rivers. We've learned about episodic rivers, and we've learned about exotic rivers. Okay, and I'm going to explain all four of them to you in the next couple of minutes. Okay, so that's the correct concepts that we need to use when we refer to rivers in matric. Okay, now first of all, let's just look at the diagram that's presented over there. The thick dotted line represents a wet water table. Okay. I'm going to use a blue pen over there because wet means there's water. Dry water table is below. So let me just get the correct color pens over here to make it easier. Now, as you can see, the wet water table, as you can see, I'm going to use the blue pen, as you can see. Now, obviously, you can see the river bed. So, obviously, and when the river is dry, it's a dry water table. There's it. As you can see, even though it's dry season, there's still water in the riverbed. Okay, it's always water in it. If you look at B, for example, right? Let me just get my blue pen. Oops, wrong color. As you can see, there's water in the riverbed. It's quite low. But during dry season, the water dries up. It's below the riverbed. Okay. Can't even see the water. And if you look at C, the water is well below the riverbed. Okay. Now, first of all, let me explain the different types of rivers. Okay, before we're going to answer these questions. Our first river is a permanent river. Type of river. Now, a permanent type of river is the river that we've learned about when we were introduced to map work. It's a perennial river. Okay, flows all year long, all year round. Why? Because it receives a hell of a lot of rain. Or it's in an area with high rainfall, or it's in a catchment area, even though in an area that receives a lot of rainfall. So a permanent river, okay, flows all year. Then that's very similar to the perennial river. Now the non-perennial river is the periodic river. Okay. Flows seasonal, okay, with seasonal rainfall. Our third type of river, okay, it's an episodic river. Now, the majority of rivers, like for instance, like the Yixke River, in Johannesburg, and the majority of rivers in the Northern Cape, it only is episodic rivers, so it usually only flows after a heavy thunderstorm, okay? And 
and usually dries up again. And our last one that we have, and we are very fortunate to have this river, there's only a few that we know of. No, there's actually quite a lot. But, I mean, the longest river in the world is an exotic river, okay? And that's the Nile River. And our biggest river drainage basin in South Africa is also an exotic river, and that's the Orange River. Now, what happens with the Orange River? Yes, it's a river that is permanent, okay? Always has water inside the riverbed, but it flows through extremely dry area. So it accumulates its rainfall from its rain, its water from a high rainfall area, okay? But during the, the course of its flow, it's through extremely dry and arid area. Now, for instance, if you look at the Nile River, for instance, you've got the Blue Nile that originates very close to the equator. And as the Nile continues to flow, it flows up in North Africa, basically through Egypt and the Sahara Desert, where it eventually, where the mouth is into the Atlantic Ocean. So the majority of the course of the river is, is going through a very extreme, dry and arid region, okay? So if you look at exotic, it's when a river flows through a very dry, arid area, but receives its water from high rainfall areas. So the majority of how this river's flow, it flows through very dry, arid regions. Now, if you quickly have a look at the questions, okay. Now, first of all, before I want to go in, A, do you guys agree with me? It's definitely permanent. Okay. Oops, just want to go out here. Do you guys agree with me that C is going to be episodic? Because even though it drains, it only flows after flash floods and then the water drains away again. And do you guys agree with me that B is going to be periodic? Because what happens? This is rainy season. Okay, let's assume this is the Western Cape. When does the Western Cape receive its rainfall? During winter. Okay, now it's raining. We accumulate lots of rain. Like for instance, let's say over 600 millimeters of rain in a matter of three months. So what's gonna happen? All the river's gonna be full of water. But what happens December? Okay, the water dries up. So it's a periodic river. That's the river we're talking about. So river B is your non-perennial river. River A is your perennial river. Okay, so let's just look at the questions. Which river, A, B, or C, is an episodic river? Definitely C. Okay. Which river, A, B, or C, is periodic? There you can see is B. As you can see, rainy season, there's water in the river bed. Dry season, it dries up. Okay, which river, A, B, or C is exotic in its lower course? Okay, excellent question. C. Okay, why the lower course? Because what did I mention with the exotic rivers? It gets its water from a high rainfall area. But the majority of the course of the river flows through a very dry and arid region. Now, the majority of its course so what starts? Where does a river originate? From the upper course, the middle course, and eventually to the lower course. So if you look at the question, which river, A, B, or C, is exotic in its lower course? It's probably the majority of the river flows through a dry area. So the correct answer is going to be C. Excellent question. Do you like that question? 2.2.4. In which 
picture A, B, or C is the riverbed always below the water table. Now the riverbed is always below. There's the riverbed. It's the bottom of the river. And that's A. So there's always water in it. We look at 2.2.5. And which picture A, B, or C does the groundwater never contribute to the stream flow? And that will be C. What is stream flow? It's when there's water inside the riverbed. So there can't be streams, no streams, because the water is never above the riverbed. So the correct answer will be C. Now if you look at 2.2.6, and which picture, A, B, or C, does the river flow only during rainy season? That's quite easy. And that's going to be B, because it's a periodic river. Okay, 2.2.7. And which picture, A, B, or C, does the river flow only after heavy showers or rainfall? Once again, that's C, but it dries straight up. And 2.2.8. And which picture, A, B, or C, does the river always intersect? The water table and that's A. Why? Because the amount of volume of water. Okay, so that's our different types of rivers. Okay, a little bit different but you've learned in grade 10 and 11. Okay, listen, grab a glass of water, we're going to take a short break, see you in a bit.